worry on this plant genetic resources uh, conservation and research because uh, more, more many people uh, studied about gene bank but we need to understand what kind of activities what are all the activities going in the gene bank so as a pg student and the phd student type uh, and the gel blossom is the base for any crop improvement program that we studied all the times so gel blossom is the base for crop improvement pro program see provide genes and uh, it needed variation for the crop improvement but we need to understand how to utilize this gel blossom and gene bank what are all the activities that we are doing in the gene bank so those things i will touch this is big lecture actually but i will go through faster so i will be covering a few aspects like global status of plant genetic resources set so a few slides and then i will talk about the core activities in the gene bank so what are all the activities that we will be doing in the gene bank taking example of it is a pair pair term and then some of the uh, research activities so that that research activities i will focus separately so coming to this plant genetic resources conservation so i think most of you may be knowing by now so there are two types of plant genetic resources conservation one is in situ conservation another one is ex situ conservation so in situ conservation is conservation of the biological diversity within their natural habitat so like forest reserves and then biospheres and on farm conservation of the land races by farmers of your a kind of in situ conservation so you you know about the on farm conservation by the farmers in india so over the thousands of years the farmers the people human being started cultivating domesticating the crops after domestication what they do they do they do sowing actually they do sowing or grow the crops and then they are some portion of the uh, are they are some portion and keep it for the next generation so like that it came over thousands of thousands of years after 10000 years or 12000 years and now the land races that are present with the farmers local varieties we call it as local varieties the farmer varieties those farmer varieties and local varieties conserved by the farmers also called as on farm conservation so another one is ex situ conservation of plant genetic resources this is conservation of plant genetic resources or biological diversity outside their natural habitat so either in the form of uh, in the controlled conditions like a seed bank a gene bank a dna bank tissue culture pollen culture all those things what are comes in, whatever way we wanted to conserve the gem blossom that will be comes under this exit uh, conservation so globally if you see uh, this is so old data uh, globally if you see there are more than 7.4 million gene blossom accretions are there that are conserved in more than 1715 gene banks globally and then uh, there may be a lot of uh, duplicates may be there because of the exchange of gene blossom from one gene bank to another gene bank one institute to the another institute uh, and some maybe 10% of the gene blossom may be wild relatives and then about 11% of the gene blossom total gene blossom that is conserved by the cgir gene bank cgir consultative group on international agriculture research this uh, group of institutions for example like research area similar to like that based on their mandate they are storing their gene bank also these things the gene banks conserving almost 11% of the total gene blossom and this is the latest information from the fao views if you go to this a few of views world information and yearly warning system on plant genetic resources there you can get information about the present status of gene blossom from where, how many gene blossom is there which country which institution and uh, crop wise all those information you can get from this information someone interested to know about uh, the crop where you are working you can just uh, look into you can see the crop here and then country all those information and then i told about 11 cgr gene bank so this is the space where it is located so 11 cgr gene banks are there so putting it is at here and this gene banks are called as a a15 gene bank article 15 gene bank so that i will tell in the next slides this 11 gene bank cgr gene bank conserving about 7.4 million 4 million accessions of important uh, crops like cereals legumes forage crops forage and uh, fruit Uh, tree, uh, sorry, uh, tuber crops, uh, roots, uh, and then banana and many important crops which are important for food and nutrition security. All these crops are conserved by these CGR gene banks. So I just mentioned about this CGR gene bank. Here is the list of the CGR gene banks. Now we are working under the gene bank, initiative on gene bank under the CGR. So it includes Africa rice, Simat, the Pisar, the NT, and the Nirli, Sip, and the Nirli. Like that, there are lots of CGR institutions. and gene banks are there 
this gene banks are conserving the gem blossom and also distributing the gem blossom to the researchers globally. And in 2021, for example, if you take it, they supplied more than 96,000 seed samples to the researchers globally, including which includes 63,000 accessions. Accession is different, the samples is different. One accession can be distributed multiple times. So, so 63,000 accessions are distributed uh, more than uh, 96,000 gem blossom samples uh, are distributed. And if you see the global exchange of gem blossom, global exchange of gem blossom happening through the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. Yeah. So, for based on that only, the international uh, exchange of gem blossom is happening. And here, one uh, segment is the, there, which is called uh, Article 15 Gene Banks. Uh, and uh, we have the. Uh, okay. So, the international the exchange of gem blossom happens through this uh, uh, ITPGR FA. Uh, FA International Treaty of Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, following the standard material transfer agreement, uh, this one agreement is there. Following that agreement, uh, this gem blossom exchange is happening. Most of the gem blossom exchange is through this treaty only. And that there are some uh, global initiatives for the conservation of plant genetic resources. There are global initiatives, uh, I will just tell you initiatives. Uh, so, first initiative, first international agreement uh, is uh, on global initiative on plant genetic resources is conservation. Convention on Biology and Diversity. So, uh, actually, conservation of the biology and diversity is very much important for uh, humankind and then for the use in the crop implement program in the future also. And considering that importance of this biological diversity, so this Convention on Plant Genetic uh, Convention on Biological Diversity came into, came into force. So, with the three objectives, one is conservation of the biological diversity, first objective, and then second objective is sustainable use of the component of the biological diversity. And then third objective is fair and equitable share of the benefit arising from the uh, biological resources, utilization of the biological resources. Previously, there was no such uh, commitments are there. Anyone can go to any country and then they can collect the gem blossom and store the gem blossom previously before the CBD. After the CBD, the, each country having their own rights on their biological resources. That's why. So we need to protect the uh, rights of the biological di uh, the diversity or the resources available in the particular country. The each country having their uh, complete rights on their biological diversity. That's why this agreement came into force. Uh, to facilitate this uh, agreement and to facilitate the exchange of gem blossom uh, to the different institutions across the across the globe. Uh, so this uh, International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture came into force uh, in 2004. This is also having the same objective with the this one we need to work in harmony with the CBD. And then here. I told this Article 15 gene bank, so this 11 CGR gene bank signed the agreement with this uh, treaty. And then here we identified, the treaty identified 64 crops, uh, food crops and uh, forage crops groups. So here you can see 64 crops, which includes food and forage crops. And uh, these gene blossoms are exchanged through standard material transfer agreement of the plant treaty. And then later, so to support the gene banks, so FAO and then Bio Biodiversity International jointly, uh, jointly uh, established the crop trust, one uh, non-profit and uh, international organization dedicated to support the plant genetic resources conservation and then to support the conservation of the plant genetic resources uh, and making it available to the users globally. So this initiative came and then uh, most of the G CJR gene banks, all the CJR gene banks and also the National Gene Bank getting support from this crop trust. Crop trust team also visited uh, uh, Madurai also when Dr. Uh, Anita uh, was there as a uh, head here. And then this is another one important initiative, global initiative for plant genetic resources conservation, which is the uh, establishment of the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. So this is the, uh, the initiative by the Norway government in cooperation with the FAO, they FAO and Crop Trust. So they established the structure called this uh, Global Seed Vault inside the mountain where the natural temperature itself it is minus uh, 16. Therefore, you can store the gem blossom for a long time. It is for the a long time. It's not for the 10 years, 20 years, 15 years like that. It is for the future generation. So, okay, to safeguard the gem blossom for the future generation also. So, Ignisert and many other institutions deposited the collections. Almost more than 94% of our collection already we deposited in the global sea world. Okay. So, up to now, I just 
told about these plants and resources global status and then some of the initiatives, the global initiatives. Now coming to the, the gene bank activities, core gene bank activities. This may be uh, uh, useful for the UG students and also PG students who are uh, trying to understand these plants and resources and then how, how these gem blossoms are concerned. So when you come to any gene bank, there are key activities in the gene bank. So the first activity is acquisition of gem blossom or collection of gem blossom. You need to collect the gem blossom and then conserve the gem blossom. So the collection of gem blossom itself is a big activity. We need to identify the gaps in the collection. For example, we are already having the gem blossom. We need to identify gaps in the collection, whether uh, this particular species is uh, rightly represented in the collection or not, whether this geographical region is rightly represented in the collection or not. Those things we need to do analysis and then do collection. Otherwise, we can go to the uh, where this diversity is there, center of origin and center of diversity. All those places you can go, go and collect the gem blossom and conserve it. So the conservation is another activity, which is the conservation of this gem blossom under appropriate storage condition. There are two types of storage condition with the, you know, the standard storage condition, which is medium term storage condition and then long term storage condition. And then uh, once you collect the gem blossom, it is also important to characterize the gem blossom. But just to collect the gem blossom and conserving the gem blossom in the gene bank will not support any utilization of that gem blossom. So you need to characterize the gem blossom. Characterization, maybe MSc students or PhD students may be knowing it. There are descriptors are there based on that. We do characterization, I tell in the next slides. Then. And regeneration is another important activity. So regeneration we do when the gem uh, the generation percentage of the seeds that we are conserving goes below the standard threshold generation percentage. For example, we are maintaining 85 percentage for some crop fields. When the stored gem blossom going, the generation stored gem blossom uh, viability goes below the standard threshold of 85 percentage, then we take some quality of seed sample and then do regeneration. And the next activity is gem blossom evaluation. So this is very important activity to utilize this gel blossom in crop. So we need to assess the gel blossom for different traits, like your biotic stress tolerance, the abiotic stress tolerance, the quality traits, all the traits. Then only we can utilize the gel blossom in crop. And then distribution. So this is the activity from through which we are distributing the gel blossom to the researchers globally. And then safety duplication. I already told the in global seed world. So we are safety duplicating our collection in the global seed world also and in other gene banks also. Right. Okay, so if you start, if you come to Ecosat Gene Bank, so here is the status of Ecosat Gene Bank collection. So Ecosat Gene Bank having uh, 129,000 gel blossom of 11 crops, including the millets, eight millets are there, sorghum, palm millet, and the six small millets, and then three legumes, chickpea, pea, jp, and ground. These three legumes, and then total 11 crops, 129,000 gel are there, which are conserved at Ecosat headquarters. And also, it is having two regional stations in uh, Africa also. So there are also some uh, part of gel blossom is there to facilitate the easy exchange of gel blossom to the African region. And this is the gene bank star, gene bank yeah. look. Here. So where, where we are having the cold rooms in the both the sides, and then we are storing. And the inside, you can see this is the bottom one is the long term storage condition, and the top one is the medium term storage condition. So I just explained about this gel blossom acquisition. And then this is about conservation. So conservation of gel blossom is medium time storage condition. The facility you are seeing there now in the bottom is uh, this one. So this is how we conserve the gel blossom. The temperature inside is 4 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity RH is 25, 20 percentage. And then we can store the gel blossom for more than 20 to 25 years also. More, more years also you can store. And then this facility is a uh, lockdown storage condition. The temperature inside is minus 20. And then the seeds, we drive the seeds to 3 to 7 percentage of moisture content so that lower the moisture content, the higher the IFPT. So we drive to the dry the moisture content to the 3 to 7 percentage and then we store it. Here, temperature, the, the IFPT should be more than 85 to 90 percentage. And these seeds that you are storing in this long term storage condition, it can stay more than 50 years also, 25 to 50 years, so it can stay. And uh, so I just mentioned about this safety duplication. Our collection we already safety duplicated in the Svalbard and also in the different gene bank in different country because the Svalbard is not for the immediate access. If uh, something if something happened, we need to access immediate limits, then we go to the uh, 
different gene bank where we store the gene bank instead of going to the small body. So this is the first level set duplication, and this is the second level set duplication. Uh, so the conserved gen blossom we are distributing to the researchers globally, and then you can see here uh, from from the side, then it reaches uh, to all the part of the country, and almost 150 countries the seed sample reached from the side. About 1.6 million seed samples were supplied, and then another activity is characterization. So I told already, this characterization is important uh, activity in the gene banking. So we are recording the observation, recording the trials. Which are highly irritable, easily seen by eyes, and also expressed expressed in all environment. So, how to identify a person? Okay, this is this is the height of the person and the color of the person, color of the eye, color of the hair, like that. Eh? To identify and to have some minimum knowledge about accession, each accession. So, we we are characterizing the gen person and then using the descriptors. So, here you can see there are descriptor crop specific descriptors are there. So recently we developed a past time in a descriptor in collaboration with the FBO and then NBBJR and IAMR. Uh, I was involved with this development of this descriptor. And then cross specific descriptors are there. You can go to the descriptors and then identify the list of rights and then you can take observation on the uh, gen person that you are considering. And also those who are MSc student and PhD student who are characterizing the gen person, they can go to this uh, descriptor list. Then uh, identify the right. These descriptors will tell you how to record, what rights to record, and how to record all the information. So, for example, here we have Pasolgo, we have these are the rights that we record, for the rights we record, and then other crops also, we have a lot of rights to record. So, creation is another activity. So, there are two types of uh, activities there here. One is regeneration, another one is multiplication. There is difference between these two words are there. Regeneration is to rejuvenate the generation percentage, viability, more than 85 percentage or more than 90 percentage, the standard. The multiplication is to increase the seed, seed. it's not uh, increasing the viability, but increase the seed. For example, uh, seed may be sufficient, seed quantity may be there with us, okay, 100 gram or 200 gram seeds may be there, but uh, when the viability goes down below the 85 percentage, we need to take the seed sample and then plant it and then regenerate it and then conserve back because we need to uh, maintain that uh, threshold uh, to maintain the genetic integrity of the taxation and also to maintain the genes and early present in that particular taxation cell. But uh, when in case of multiplication, because of frequent distribution, then the sleep quality may be going down, then we will be multiplying the gen blossom. So this is another activity. Uh, here it is there. So for the regeneration, <coughs> the generation standard we are having is 85 percentage. And then for the LTS, we have 90 percentage. If the generation percentage in the LTS goes below the 90, uh, 90 percentage, or uh, the generation percentage in the MTS goes below the 80 percentage in the MTS, then we take six sample. And then in the regeneration, uh, important activity in the regeneration is pollination control. You cannot simply plant any crop and then multiply it and then keep it in the gene bank. So we need to follow the Regeneration protocol and pollination control is there. So, for example, we are supplying gel blossom from Ichika to uh, TNU, and then uh, TNU scientists wanted to multiply it and then keep it in the gene bank. So they cannot simply plant it and then harvest the crop and then keep it. So, we need to follow the pollination controls also, also and then population uh, size also important to maintain the genetic integrity of that particular accession. Population size is important. Uh, here, for example, in the sorghum, we do bagging before analysis we need to do bagging and then maybe after 20 days or 25 days we can just open it because of analysis happened and then seeds that happened to prevent the fungal damages and other damages we are opening after 20 days 25 days and and then we are for example in the palm letter it is highly cross pollinated crop 100 percent cross pollinated crop here we cannot do selfing because if you do selfing you studied about irritating depression I, I hope you studied in inbreeding depression. So in this case of sorghum, it is often cross pollinated crop. You can do selfing and then you with the uh, appropriate population size, then we can harvest the crop and then put it in the gene bag. But in case of palm nut, we cannot self it. We need to cluster bagging. We need to cluster bagging means the plants, the individual plants, uh, adjacent plant, we need to cluster it. So here you can see uh, what we will do: multiple multiple panicles together, we bag it. Instead of single panicles, we do multiple panicles together, we bag it. 
full in such situation what happens it mimic the random mating so it mimics the random mating so that the uh, genetic uh, uh, inbreeding depression we are preventing inbreeding depression at the same time the genetic integrity of the particular accession we are maintaining because now many many researchers are getting gen plasm and they don't, don't store the gen plasm because these are all the important things that they need to follow. And the crops like self pollinated crops, there you no need to follow any uh, standard protocol for pollination control because it is naturally self pollinating. So here the population size is important. The population, if, uh, if you just plant one like one plant and then R O stick means it will not it will not represent that particular accession. Because when you when uh, any researcher going to farmers field, they are collecting uh, uh, collecting uh, land race from the farmers field. That land race is heterogeneous in nature. Particularly uh, the cross pollinated crop, it will have more heterogeneity in the farmer field. That heterogeneity we need to get the, as a genetic resources person we collect it and then conserve it in the gene bank. Our responsibility is to store that heterogeneity, to store that genes and store that alleles as such. We we don't want to lose that. Uh, uh, genes and alleles. So therefore, we practice the, the, uh, the cluster bagging and selfing, those things. But here, chickpea and groundnut, for example, self pollinating crop, we just maintain the population. Here in groundnut, we plant four rows and then we harvest the seeds and then store it in the gene bank that way. And in case of PGNP, so PGNP also often cross pollinated crop. And uh, previously, the uh, scientists used to do uh, individual plant uh, bagging. Bagging with the cloth bags. But uh, in Ignisar, we started following complete caging of the particular action, particular block eh, so that this uh, outcrossing is because of the, the insect. Eh, therefore, completely we are caging it and preventing it. You, you can see no gap available anywhere. Here also we cover it with the soil. So only one entry will be there. That also we will cover once we go inside. Then we are, we are preventing the outcrossing. So this way we are regenerating. But here also population size is important. And small blood skits also sell pollinated crop, so you can plant it with the appropriate population size and then you can harvest and store it in the gene bank. And during regeneration process, it's very important to check the accession identity, identity because, because of sampling error, because of labeling error, because of any, any reasons. So there may be possibility of accession, losing the accession identity. So we take the record in the gene bank like uh, passport data, like uh, the uh, characterization data, like pigmentation and then flowering, when it flower, what is the uh, flower color, what is the panic length width, and then other lot of qualitative traits we take and then we observe that uh, cross, then only if it is, okay, this is the accession that we planted when we uh, identify that one, then we harvest it and then store it. Otherwise, it will not harvest. So this is one activity that we do, like uh, capacity building and training. That we and uh, so this is the Ignisar Gene Bank web, uh, web page where you can see all these whatever activity we are doing and then you can see all this information, particularly the passport information about the cow and characterization. So whatever characterization we are doing, all the complete information uh, will be available here and then this uh, gen plasm evaluation data will be here and then there are four, many more things are there that I will tell in the future slides. Uh, all the substrate and then all the characterization and the passport data available. You can go to this website and then filter out the based on your need. I need a gem blossom from uh, Tamil Nadu. You wanted to search means then you can go to this uh, uh, passport data and then uh, there you will be having option to search it from India, from Tamil Nadu like that. So like that you can search it and filter out uh, from thousand accession to hundred accession based on your needs. So this one is another database which is called uh, Genesis Global Database. Uh, here you can see this is the uh, web page uh, Genesis PGR. You will just go to Google and then search Genesis PGR. There you will get all the information about the gem, gem blossom, global gem blossom information will be available. So here you can see here uh, you can see four lakhs uh, more than four more than four four point three million six samples are there. Means uh, accessions are there. So up to up to this, I just briefed about uh, the core activities in the gene banks. Uh, if any clarification is needed, then we can uh, stop here and then we can go to the last of it. Otherwise, I will finish it and then we will have yeah, some okay. minutes. Okay. 
So this we are entering into the templas and research aspect. So I see uh, gene bank research uh, having two, two sides of the gene bank research. One is uh, to enhance the gene bank operation. So whatever research we are doing to enhance the gene bank operation, that I see as uh, one, one side. And another side is to enhance the use of germplasm in crop improvement. So that one we have, I, I see as a different side. For example, to identify the gaps in the collection and to assess the diversity within accession and then assess the sample size needed for regeneration and then uh, seed conservation research. All these things will contribute to enhance the conserv efficient conservation of germplasm. And then other side, uh, development of subsets uh, and gem blossom evaluation, identification of transfusion sources, all those things that will be on to enhance the use of gem blossom in the crop. So I told about the gap analysis here. You can see we did gap analysis for almost all the crops and then we identified here we have rich collection, but these places where the, the, the shaded areas are there, the gaps are there that we need to go and collect gem blossom from those areas to reach our collection. So like that, other crops also we did. I will go past. So we identified gaps in the, our collection. Even though we have 42,000 gem blossom at degree certain, so we region wise we identified gaps here. And then, for example, South Asia, East Africa, like that. Then we found 131 uh, uh, gaps in uh, Asia and then 153 gaps in the Africa, like that. So those gaps we are trying to uh, go and then collect the gem blossom to enter the collection. Um, so we, I told about the population size is very much important eh, during regeneration because uh, if you receive sample gem blossom from gene bank, eh, that will be uh, highly heterogeneous. See, for example, in uh, pearl blood, and then if you just plant and then harvest the few individual from few individual from that blood accession and then like, put it in the gene bank, then that particular accession will not represent the the gem blossom that received from the crystal. So. The population size is very much important. The population uh, uh, size depends on the uh, pollination system also. So outclassing and then cell pollinate cell and all those things are there. So here we took uh, three types of uh, crops. One is sorghum, another one is pigeon key, another one is palm bread. The palm bread is highly cross pollinated crop. And the sorghum is uh, sorghum is often cross pollinated crop and the pigeon key also often cross pollinated crop. So we assessed what is the diversity within accession. Within accession, what is the diversity? Then we found that within accession is very high in case of palm blood because of its outcrossing nature. And then within accession diversity in the sorghum is low and the region is mean because of its extent of the diversity within accession and then the outcrossing nature. And considering this uh, within accession diversity, we estimated the population size. We estimated population size uh, so that uh, we will be regenerating gem blossom to capture maximum diversity within accessions. And for, so for sorghum, we need about 47 to 101 individual to make one accession. So you need to plant uh, more than 50, 50 individuals needed to make one accession. And for palm blood, we need about 150 to 200 individuals needed to make one accession and then for pigeon we need, we need more than 77 to 89 accession 89 individual is needed to make one accession then only it will represent the particular accession the single plant will not represent the particular accession. so and our responsibility is to conserve that uh, total diversity and total allelic and the genetic diversity of the particular accession so during our regeneration process we always maintain this population so when we plan to reach a uh, sorghum regeneration, we always maintain more than 50 individuals. And for per more than 150 individuals, we maintain to RS to uh, conserve the gem blossom. So here another aspect is uh, how to enhance the use of gem blossom. I will uh, straight away go to the core collections. I think uh, some of you might have studied what is core collection, what is mini core collections, the PGR student or those who are studying the PGR. The core collection, um, whenever we have a large number of gem blossom, and we need to use the gem blossom means that we need to have some idea where to where to start. So how to start uh, to assess the gem blossom. Uh, instead of evaluating large number of gem blossom, this is very economically very difficult also, and the resource and time consuming also. Then we came to the concept called core collection, which is 10% uh, of the total collection. So when you have 1,000 gem blossom in your gene bank for particular crop, palm, or sorghum, then you 
using the passport and characterization information, you develop a subset. Development of subset is statistically you need to develop a subset. And that subset will be 10% of the total collection. For example, 1000 exemplars we have, then the subset will be 1000 uh, 100 accession subset, which is easily manageable by any research institution and uh, it is economically one can have it also for different rights. So, like that, from the uh, for the Chris Gene Bank, from the uh, Sorghum you take example, from 42,000 gen plus accession, we developed 2000 plus accession as a subset core collection. From the core collection, again, we uh, develop the mini core also. Sometimes the core also sometimes large in size. Uh, it, it take example of Equisat collection, it is 40,000 and core collection will be 4,000. And that 4,000 also very big in number to, to, to handle it. Therefore, we came to the concept called mini core collection. Then that mini core collection is 1% of the total collection and 10% of the core collection. So here you, we are filtering the diversity, but still we are maintaining the diversity here. So this mini core collection also will represent maximum diversity of the total collection. And so it is a gene bank and also many other scientists developed core collections for almost all the crops. Here I just listed the crops we are working, but many crops, the genetic research scientists, they developed a core collection and they assessed with the gene possible. So once we develop the core collection, uh, it is not uh, our responsibility is not ending. So next level big activity is gel blossom evolution. So using that substrate, we need to evaluate the gel blossom for different traits: biotic stresses, abiotic stresses, quality traits, nutrition, all the aspects. We need to assess. Then only we are we can able to identify trait specific sources. So here I just took example of few crops here, and you see here for crown there are fifteen thousand fifteen thousand gel blossoms are there, and the core collection is seventeen uh, seven hundred. Accessions are there in both And then mini core is 184 accession. Here, based on different researchers, ask partners, and deep research scientists, they have identified promising sources for different tribes. So, here for us, aplotoxin resistant, red blood leaf spot, early leaf spot, and then many other diseases are. So, here examples are there. Similarly, in chickpea, and then different uh, diseases and insect pests also we identified tribes with sources. Uh, and the similar in PJP also, different diseases are there. We characterize the gem blossom, we evaluate the gem blossom, and then tribe specific sources are identified, and the program also. And then there are some gem blossoms which are sources for multiple tribes also. And you take them here and just by Boston, different crops in Finger also. And uh, nowadays we are having the uh, technology, high throughput uh, phenotyping, high throughput phenotyping technologies are there large scale phenotyping platforms are available nowadays. So we started uh, phenotyping the large number of gen, block, gen blossom also. If you take example, nowadays genotyping is not a big issue. So if you have some resources in within a month, you can genotype 10,000 gen blossom or 20,000 gen blossom also. So we did the, within a month, we did the 10,000 gen blossom actually genotyping. And then we have the facility called the XR of NIRS and other facility and also the phenotyping facilities are there and through which we can uh, phenotype a large number of gen blossom. When we have such facility, then we can also look and explore so to evaluate the large number of gen blossom. Here you can see this the chickpea more than 5,000 accession we currently we allocated more than 5,000 accession. This 5,000 accession is uh, the uh, subset from the NPBGR and Ecrisat collection. Both together we joined together and then we planted it in uh, Ecrisat and another location in Delhi. And then both the location we assessed this, uh, we evaluated the gem blossom. And then we also screening the gem blossom for different uh, diseases also, like visoliquid and light, and then PGM. This is the uh, physiological screening facility here. You can do large number of gem blossom screening for environmental adaptation drives and drought. This one is basic meter is drought screening. So through this one, you can do a large number of gem blossom screening. And here you can see this, we, this is the chick, uh, chick plot, fissure in the chick, uh, chick plot, where we planted more than 900 accessions and then we found some accessions which are disease resistance. You can see here these are all probably died, but these two accessions and many accessions still surviving. By, by this way, we are identifying transposic sources. And then uh, I will just skip this slides. One now, I will just brief about these slides only because this is very much important, which contributed to the global agriculture. 
So you know ground nut, and then ground nut there is a late release part and early release part is a big disease. Still now we are unable to uh, control, but it is there. And there is one accession which is uh, ICG A two one six. This accession was selected by the USDA Gene Bank and they conserved it conserved it in their Gene Bank. From USDA Gene Bank, then it came to Ipsat, and then from Ipsat it went to researchers globally. And this is the one accession that contributed resistant gene. For the late new spot and early new spot, so this particular accession and the particular gene is responsible for contributing the disease resistance in case of ground nut. But we should not uh, stay uh, with the only one source of resistance because if any if, if any chances are there, if any breakdown happens, then we need to look for another source also. And uh, in the cultivated the. Sources are very rarely found. Therefore, we went to another species, which is called Arachis glabrata. There, interestingly, out of 77 accession we screened, 65 accessions are highly resistant to late leaf spot. So this is this gives interesting information to us. So how to utilize this uh, this uh, uh, species in the crop improvement? So we are exploring, but this one is a traditional tertiary gene pool. So how to utilize, how to transfer the genes and try to the primary gene pool is very much important. But uh, almost 15, 20 years it was in the ring only. So, but last year only we assessed it and then we found that this is uh, this species having the resistance. So, like that, uh, wild species actions also having so much of resistant genes and yields uh, that we need to utilize it. And uh, based on our uh, research, and then we developed subsets like core collection, we developed a mini core collection, we developed, and then the tribe species sources like. Uh, Drought tolerant accession. This is the list of accession which is heat tolerance. For example, 30 accession which is resistant to heat, and then 242 accession which are resistant to fusarium heat, and then uh, multiple multi trite specific accessions in ground level. And then, so like, like that, we developed with trite specific sources also. So, these are the trite specific sources which are directly useful for the researchers who are looking or who are working on this uh, specific area. Uh, so, if you see impact of the uh, Igrisat uh, as well as breeding program globally, more than 1200 varieties and uh, hybrids were released through Igrisat supplied, Igrisat gene bank and then breeding program supplied Gemplosum and got released as uh, varieties globally. And uh, overall summary, we have good number of Gemplosum for most of the crops, uh, including uh, sorghum, palm, nut, chickpea, yeah. and many crops, rice, wheat, maize, and all those crops. But uh, there are many underutilized crops out there. The, for example, small nuts, pulses, minor pulses, vegetables, all those things. We need to collect the gem blossom and conserve it. Otherwise, we will be losing it. One or other way, we will be losing because of replacement of the uh, uh, different uh, crops and then different different uh, Apart from, uh, Next one is we need to screen the gem blossom uh, systematically for biotic, aerobatic stresses and quality traits. Now we have the opportunity to screen the large number of gem blossom using the high throughput phenotyping and genotyping tool. So we can uh, explore that kind of technology to screen the gem blossom and then use the genomic tools like uh, uh, we used uh, GMOS and then uh, genomic selections uh, and also we are uh, uh, developing a little specific markers also for different traits. Uh, like we need to explore the genomics also to utilize the gem blossom in profit. Overall, this is the three uh, key area where we are uh, we need to focus and we need to do that. So some researcher who are interested to receive gel plasm from Ikrisat, you can write mail to the Ikrisat uh, dash at .org. and you can see the website, Jinbank website is here, and then the global PGR website is here, and then we are supplying gel plasm to supply, and then uh, the top list, crop list is one of the biggest uh, donor for our Jinbank activity, apart from the FPO and other donors, DBT, India, and other things. So with this, uh, thank you very much. I went fast because I need to go for another program also. Uh, the degree program is available only at IRI. MSc, the plant genetic resources. Usually from TNAU, they used to get one seat at IRI New Delhi. So PGR is very easier. So out of five courses, plant sciences, if you prepare, the genetics is a very most demanding subject, followed by microbiology, pathology, and doubt. So PGR also will get it at NBB level. So study well the plant sciences course. You may get a chance to acquire a seat at IR. So the PGR uh, is a, it's a very demanding one. In the R&D company, it is in a great demand.
So he also worked as an AR scientist. Then he resigned that job and now he is a psychiatric scientist. So in what uh, risk do you decide a permanent post? And let's see, because a research post is not a permanent one. Every year based upon the, the progress, it will be extended. So is it not risk for you instead of a permanent job? Yeah, it was the big risk I decided at that time. So resigning the, the central government job, which is also good payment. The salary also good and then uh, job also good. The place I got position was uh, uh, the UP, Director of Seed Research. Uh, somehow, I'm not so happy uh, the way I'm working there. So I got opportunity at Degree Set, so I just uh, moved from there to here. So because I like the way Degree Set is, uh, is working. So a lot of commitments, a lot of research activities, uh, responsibilities more and than we do. Really, we spend more time on research, not the, the administrative, not the, uh, the thing that we are not useful. So we thought it is that we focus a lot of research activities for most of the time. 90 percent of our activity, mostly research only. Administration will be taken care by the administrative staff. So and then uh, here a salary also good. So both way uh, I, I do risk. <laughs> Very great sir I'm understanding the community science. It's really great that to such show a kind of a company where you are getting more confidence from you. And also for doing much research work later to it's really great, sir. But uh, this is uh, based on the uh, cultivation and job blossom. But I am interested on post harvest. What type of structure, storage structure we are having? For any work is being done on that. Place. Yes, yes. Post harvest, including the processing and then value addition. So we have two two types actually. Post harvest. Yeah, yeah. Post harvest. Yeah. So value addition. So for value addition, like in Madurai, we have the agribusiness center also. Ikri Sat is having a big uh, agribusiness innovation platform. Eh? So there are a lot of uh, startups, they are working and then developing product. Eh? They, the start, people like uh, the student who are interested or the startup people who are interested, they may be having idea. So that with the idea, you can go and discuss with them, they develop the product. So here also I know the activities going on. So the post harvest activities going on. Same way is the very big program is there, and then uh, the uh, the storage we are not focusing much here, particularly Saturday. So we are uh, the, the same department is working on the post harvest processing also, and the valuation, both the things. Sir. But much focus is on research and then the uh, valuation. Yes. How many scientists are working? Um, Previously it was more, but now maybe 400, 500, uh, including, uh, including the Africa region. It's the only CGR, uh, CGIAR yes. institute located in India. Yes, it's only one institute uh, in India. So, wish you all the best to, for the students uh, to get posting at CGR institutes, uh, not only in India, but also in other countries. Thank yes. you. So one one uh, one thing I wanted to tell you: those who are interested to do PG and PhD, and then I came here. From here, actually, I registered a MT new student uh, from MSc uh, PhD. I did uh, my coursework. I completed in TNA point uh, After coursework, one year I came here and did registration, and then went to Ikrisat as a research scholar there. So, like that, uh, some of you who may be interested to do research work in Ikrisat uh, or any other institutions, uh, you can look. Explore to come to different institutions like uh, this art, uh, cemetery, and many places also. And you can work. So you can register in some institute and then join uh, the art for research activity. We are taking so many students. Now, currently, we have a PhD student and uh, one MS student in, in the gene bank. And then uh, many interns are coming in, PhD students. So 15, 20 interns are always there in the gene bank. So they come. Uh, for three months to six months, they work and learn the uh, activity that we are doing, and they, they are getting very good exposure. Any charges there for internship? Internship, no, we are not charging because they are coming and they are learning and uh, they are working based on the activity that we are doing. So we are not charging internship. Maybe some stipend is also going. Stipend we don't give for internship because it is. The I received the stipend content. 10% per month. When I was a PhD student, I got 15,000. 
now we are giving a uh, 25000 also but the based on the fund availability only so okay, student uj no most like means they come for internship that's no now, it is the, the uh, interest from you and then you are coming to learn it is part of academic uh, so many institution maybe tnu ic are not having that internship work okay? but lot of the private in, uh, institution in uh, state they are having that program internship program three month they come here and then they work in the in bank they go 